Yeah, so I'm Steve Price. I'm the Thomas Graham Professor of Physical Chemistry. So I'm the Head of Physical Chemistry at UCL. I'm a physician in the Chemistry Department. I'm also a Professor of Chemical Physics. Well, I've always been very interested in the education, the teaching side of my job, as well as the research side. You know, academics do both research and teaching. And I've seen in my research field that my career has become more interdisciplinary as I've sort of progressed. I started doing a very sort of niche part of chemistry, very niche even for chemistry, but gradually that's expanded to interact with many more other areas, so physics, planetary science, some engineering, and it became clear to me that in fact being trained at the start in this interdisciplinarity in the mod world would really be quite a useful thing to be, so I wouldn't ha one wouldn't have to go off and suddenly learn all about planetary science again, which I had to do, um, learning those things would actually help your development as a scientist, particularly in the modern world where things aren't as compartmentalised, where you do interact with lots of different subjects all at the same time. And in particularly, you see interviewing students, I interview students for when they apply to chemistry degrees, often the students don't want to be as compartmentalised as restricting themselves to chemistry, so I think there is a real market for the interdisciplinarity the degree actually offers. Yes, yeah, so depth is a real issue and it's important to say that our students will reach the same standard that chemistry students say will in their final modules, but only in a, a narrower range of subjects. So you'll have pathways through that will take you to sufficient depth. You won't spend a scattergun approach all across the subject. So for example, just take um, molecular physics. So you could there do some quantum mechanics in the physics department, you can do some spectroscopy in the chemistry department, you could do modules in earth sciences where you learn how that spectroscopy is used to identify molecules and planetary atmospheres, you could look at some of the mathematics that's involved in deconvoluting spectral signatures in those spectra, so in fact you can establish quite a coherent pathway through not restricting yourself to one particular subject but you're still actually narrow enough in your scattergun that you actually reach a sufficient level. You have to reach the advanced level in three modules in the end, so, and our pathways are designed so you can actually get there. Quantum mechanics is another good example. So in fact, you need some of the unusual mathematical techniques that you would develop in the maths department. Then you would, could apply those in physics, principally to atoms. But then the chemists go on in the eyes of the physicists to make this all rather more approximate when you apply these structures to molecules. And you can learn a lot about the theoretical modeling of molecules there predicting, say, spectra for species that are detected in interstellar space, and then, in fact, go on in some of the astronomy modules to see whether those species are detected and how you could actually detect them. So a co coherent sort of spectroscopic structural theme running through there is, again, something that one could do. Well, something we got very interested in recently is actually trying to apply some of our studies to help companies actually make thin films. So there's a big um, industry in the UK at the moment in making thin films and coatings for various sort of technological aspects. So this is one of these ideas. So trying to understand how some of these thin films grow is uh, very important. And often these things are done very empirically in that people just sort of fire things at surfaces and see what happens. Um, what we'd like to do is understand the chemistry that's going on here to help people grow these films more efficiently, understand why they grow and help explain their properties. So what we're developing is a way of actually farming specific species at these surfaces and then seeing what the chemistry of those species is. These species are, are radicals, they're highly reactive, so you've got to make them in clever ways so you don't coat your surfaces just with other muck that's about. But then actually we'll be able to understand the chemistry that goes on in growing some of these thin diamond films or new materials for photovoltaics. So actually, you know, there we've got to understand material science about what the surfaces actually do. It's no good so making a wonderful surface that then isn't in any way usable in industry. So the material science pro properties of these are in very important. The engineering to actually build the machine and the design and the development to do this is very, very important. So you've got to understand about all sorts of aspects of high vacuum systems and various things to do with microwave plasmas and all things that are involved in engineering. Yeah.